Good morning, and welcome to the All People International Church. Listen, I am so excited about this being God's day. I'm excited because, listen, I don't care what season or what's going on in your life right now. Can you do me a favor? Just speak into the atmosphere. This is our season. It's our season. And can I tell you something, saints? I'm excited because everything that God has promised us it's getting ready to happen. I feel that inside of me so strong. It's getting ready to happen. Your blessings, it's getting ready to happen. Your miracle, it's getting ready to happen. Can you do me a favor? Can you just speak that into the atmosphere in your own homes today? Scream, it's getting ready to happen happen yes it is it's gonna happen and i don't care what the devil says how he tries to fix it it's going to happen i am so excited about that on today listen 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 i'm excited because we have made the devil out of a liar we have once again proven that we trust god we stand on his promises and we're going to remain obedient to what his word says I want to encourage you on this morning to continue to give, continue to be a blessing, continue to just stand on God's promises. I want to let you know on this morning that I trust God, I stand on his promises, and I'm going to be obedient to what his word says. I want to encourage you on this morning to continue to give. There's different ways that you can give. One way you can give is by clicking the button right there on the Facebook page. Right there on the page, there's a button that you can click, a donate button that can allow you to give on this morning. Another way you can give is by going to our Facebook web page. It's www.allpeopleinternationalchurch.org. And again, that's www.allpeopleinternationalchurch.org. Please go there and give. Also, you can give by downloading the app. There's awesome apps you can download. One app is the actual cash app. Yes, it's a dollar sign, a green dollar sign, like my shirt, a green dollar sign, and look for the All People International Church. That's a dollar sign, A-P-I-C, dollar sign, A-P-I-C. And also, you can go to Givelify. Givelify is another wonderful app that you go to, go to to be able to give as well. Listen, I am encouraged on this morning. I am excited on this morning about what God is about to do in our lives. Listen, do me a favor. Speak into the atmosphere again. Just scream, it's going to happen. No matter what's going on, it's going to happen. God's going to bless you like never before. Listen. We have a treat for you on this morning. We have a wonderful treat. Our very own Chief Apostle Arthur T. Jones Sr. has a word from you. God bless you. Let's have church. Good morning, all people, and God bless you on this Sunday morning. And saints everywhere, it's a good day to be alive and to know that we're in God's hand. For the Lord God is the joy, the peace, and the strength of our lives a very present help in the time of any trouble. He's all our sufficiencies. Whatever we need in life, God's got it. God has the power to heal, to deliver, to keep, and to bless us. And no matter where we are, God will always care for us, deliver us, and bless us because we are his children. We are the called of God. We are God's anointed. We are saved, we are sanctified, we are full of his spirit. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are the head and not the tail. We are always above and never beneath. We are God's children. We and we are blessed of God. Our house is blessed. Our seed is blessed. And everything that pertains to our name is blessed because we are the children of God. God bless you today. We are excited to have you viewing in with us in this early morning broadcast from the All People International Church. Well, we're home now. We're home now. We're we, we are not at church. We're streaming live on Facebook. And before I turn it over to, to Pastor Ardell to bring the word for the day, I just want to stretch my hands out and give to you a great hug and say, your bishop, your chief apostle, I love you from my heart. Now the word.
So make some noise to put your hands together for our chief apostle. Thank God for him. I'm Pastor Ardell Jones, pastor here at All People International Church, and we're just excited that you joined us another Sunday for our virtual worship service. You know how we do it every Sunday. Do me a favor. Your lower right hand side of your screen, you'll see a button that says share. Click on that share button. Come on, come on, come on. Everyone, stop whatever you're doing right now and click on that share button. It's right there on the, low, the, the lower right hand side of your screen. Share it. You don't have to put anything in it. If you want to type something, type in join us. Type in it's going down. Type in I'm excited. And share this with your friends and family so they know that church that service is going on right here with all people in a national church i pray beloved that your week has been a blessing i know the devil has tried some things this week but you already have the victory all right we're gonna do a test run y'all know what i want i want y'all to blow facebook up them comment sections just type 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 Facebook even made it easier for you. They, they, Facebook loves the church. They went ahead and added some, some buttons for you. They put in the hands up. They put in amen. And they know we know how to spell hallelujah. So they put in there hallelujah. So now you don't got to spell it. You can just click yeah. Every time you want to say hallelujah, just click it, click it, click it, click it. Come on, let's put all your comments up and let's share this. Let's share this, share this, share this with the world. Again, can you please make some noise and, and, and send, send a message to our business. He's watching right now too. Did y'all know? Don't tell nobody. Y'all know bitch got a Facebook page. He, I was on Facebook one time and I just saw something come and say Bishop Jones. Ain't no bitch. I'm like, who is that? I know that ain't my daddy. So listen, right now in those comments, just say, hey, Bishop. Hey, Bishop. We love you. We love you. Everyone type right now. Hey, Bishop. We love you. We love you. Again, we, I'm Pastor Arnold Jones. We bring you greetings from the all people in the National Church with, with myself and Chief Apostle A.T. Jones and Bishop Sharon Jones. We are so excited that you join us today for worship. Come on, beloved. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. And go with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. You know I pride myself in being bilingual. Uh, this morning, we're going to preach some from the New Living Translation, NLT Translation. So on your iPhone, on your tablet, whatever. If not, it'll be on the screen. Don't worry about it. It'll be right there at the bottom of your screen. All our notes for the day, all right? Listen, let's share this. Let's, let's comment, comment, comment. Let somebody know, hey, it's going down right now and all people in the National Church. 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to start with verse number 2. Are you ready? <clears throat> 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 2, NLT. And it says this, what can I do to help you, Elijah asks? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. Can I ask you a question today, beloved? I want to know today, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? You know, this past weekend, beloved, the faith community experienced the unthinkable. We experienced the unthinkable. Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, yes, Resurrection Sunday, the Sunday that we celebrate all throughout the world, the Super Bowl for the church. You know, Easter is the Super Bowl where everybody come to church. They, your mama come, your sister come, your brother come, everybody come on Easter. The sinner come to church on Easter. But we, 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 we experience the unthinkable, beloved. We were, had to stay in the house. We were locked out of our sanctuary. Ah, uh, ah, uh, to quote one, one a, a gifted urban philosopher, Biggest Smalls, he said that many of us was hoping, that, listen, I hope that it, it was just a dream. I, I hope it was just a dream, but then we woke up and it was our reality. Being separated from the saints and being separated from our secret sanctuaries on such a significant Sunday. What it did, beloved, it solidified our new temporary reality. Did you hear me say temporary? This is our temporary reality because what we in right now, oh, I feel like preaching this early in the message. What we in right now is only for a season. What we're in right now is only temporary. Go ahead and type in temporary, temporary. Te Even in your life, you're going through some trials. You're going through some tribulations. You're going through some circumstances. Can I speak that in your life? I declare and decree in the atmosphere. I release it in the atmosphere that what you're going through right now is only temporary. It's going to get better. Go ahead and type in. It's going to get better. Listen, this is our temporary. 
temporary reality caused by this messy pandemic. This is our reality right now, but it is only temporary. Who would have ever thought that we'd have been celebrating Resurrection Sunday in our homes? But thank God for Jesus. Thank God that even in our homes, he still got up. Go ahead and type in, he got up in my home. He got up in my home. He got, even in our homes, he still got up. You know, beloved, in this scripture, 2 Kings uh, uh, chapter, chapter 4, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, the stories of these two ladies in, in 2 Kings, it, it has some of the best preaching possibilities in the world. Let's take a peek inside this widow's house and see what's going on. Turn and look at me at verse number 1. Verse number one, God's word version. You know, you know I'm Bible lingual. I, I go back and forth. Verse number one, God's word. And it says this. It says, one of the wives of a disciple of the prophets of Elijah. Uh-huh. So one of the wives of a disciple of the prophet called to Elijah, Sir, my husband is dead. My husband is dead. You know how he feared the Lord. Now a creditor has come to take my two children away. You know how he feared the Lord. Now a creditor has come to take my two children away. Very quickly, beloved, actually right there in the first verse, the first verse tells us five significant things we know about this girl's husband. Five things we know right off the bat about this, about this man. Number one, he was a husband. Number one, he was her husband. He was her husband. He was her supplier. He was her sustainer. He was her husband. Number two, we know that he was a father. She, she said very clearly that my children, she, he was a father. Not only was he a father, beloved, Thirdly, uh, he was submitted to his man of God. Can I ask you a question? How many of you are truly submitted to your man or your woman of God? I'm talking about truly submitted. I'm not talking about you in and out and you wishy-washy. How many of you are truly submitted? We learned that he was truly submitted to his man of God. Fourthly, we learned that he feared God. Ah, uh, yes, beloved. We learned that he feared God. And lastly, lastly, we can't deny what the scripture says. Lastly, the scripture says that he died in death. Yeah, he died in death. Beloved, can I tell you, you can love God, you can love your church, you can love your family and still be financially unstable. Ah, uh, can I say that again? You can love God. You can love your church, you can love your family, and you can still be financially unstable. Your money can still be funny. Ah, uh, yeah, type in right now. Some, some of you know, say your money can still be funny. Yeah, you can love God with everything you have, love your church, go to church all the time, time, give, whatever you want, love your family, and you can still have financial, uh, be financially unstable in your home. That's why, beloved, that's why Romans 13 and 8, I feel, I feel that Romans 13 and 8 should be one of your favorite scriptures. And every year when you're writing out your resolutions, you know those things, uh, when you're writing out your plan for, for the year, when you write out what you want God to do, I believe this scripture, beloved, needs to be included in your plan. Well, Pastor, what is that scripture? I'm so glad you asked. Romans 13 and 8 says, Oh, no one anything. Oh, no one, anything. King James, oh, no man, nothing. Now, I'm not talking about those nagging bills like, I don't know, all over Facebook, I don't know who y'all have for electricity, but we got JEA. Now, we got Jacksonville Electric Authority, and I tell you, don't people ain't no joke. They will cut you off in a minute. So I'm not talking about those nagging bills that we have to pay to survive. I'm talking about you going out shopping every weekend and doing this and doing this and maxing out credit cards. If you don't have cash, don't buy it. You maxing out credit cards. You're doing all this. Oh, no man, nothing. Don't get in so much debt. Why? Because in the end, some of us, especially in some of our communities, we have no insurance. Uh, we have no securities. We have nothing. And then when we die, all the weight just to bury you is on your family. Don't put that weight on them. Oh, no, man, nothing. Now, again, I'm not talking about those nagging things, but all that extra stuff. Now, this father, this husband, he has died, but he has died in debt, and now his debt has endangered his children. 
is right there in the text. He's died in debt. Now his debt has endangered his children. For the scripture says, she tells the man of God, she tells the prophet that the creditors have come to enslave my two sons. His debt has now endangered his family. Can I tell you, don't let your debt, don't get so deep in debt that your debt endangers your children. For the Bible says that you're supposed to leave an inheritance for your children. They shouldn't inherit debt. They should inherit well, oh, you should leave a greater inheritance for your children. Come on, we gotta move. Look at verse number two. It's about to get good, y'all. Look at verse number two. Uh, uh, the A clause says this, NLT, back to New Living Translation. It says, what can I do to help you, Elijah asks. Elijah's talking to this widow woman. She said, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry that your husband is dead. What can I do to help you? And then he says this. He says, tell me, what do you have in the house. Tell me, what do you have in the house? And this is the question, beloved, that I want to raise to you on this virtual weekend. I want to know, what do you really have in your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you really have in your house? Not, not superficially, but in reality. What is actually in your house? Because truth be told, beloved, all of our homes and all of our homes, there are some good things and there's some bad things. Oh, hey, tell the truth right there. Tell the truth. Go ahead and say, go ahead and type in your yeah, pastor. You tell the truth. In our house, there are some good things and some bad things. Truth be told, in our homes, there's joy and there's sorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's happiness and there's sadness. There's laughter and there's tears. Yeah. Now, now I know, I know, I know mama told you uh, don't spread the house business. What, what happens in this house stays in this house. But can I tell you, some of that stuff in some of our homes need to be told. It needs to be kicked out of our house. So first of all, I want to know, beloved, is there financial wholeness in your house? Is there financial wholeness in your house? Are you using this time to save money? Are you using this time where you can lay something aside, sat there with, so when we come out of this pandemic, because you do know we're coming out. Go ahead and type in right there. We're coming out. We're coming out. You do know we're coming out. Do you have financial wholeness? Or are you spending like crazy? Listen, I had a pastor friend of mine, uh, PC Moore. Uh, he's up north, y'all. He took a picture on Facebook um, yesterday. It looks like he was upstairs in his home. And he took a picture out his window. Uh, it was an Amazon truck right in front. He said, y'all, please pray for me because this van has been at my house every single day. Are you doing stuff you shouldn't be doing and spending more than you should be because you're bored? You just, like my mama, you say, go pick up your Bible and read your Bible. <laughs> Get off, get off, get off Amazon and stop all that shopping. Go, go read your Bible. Is there financial wholeness in your house? Are you, are you spending not thinking about the future? Are you spending not understanding, beloved, that when this is over, you're going to be better? But secondly, are there unresolved issues in your house? Yeah, beloved, are there some unresolved issues in that house? You know, during the time when everybody in, mama, mama in the house all day, daddy in the house all day, sister and brother in the house all day, children are in the house all day, some of the houses, grandparents are in the house, grandmama and granddaddy, cousins, uncles, all these people in the house, and we can't go nowhere, we stuck in the house. Can I tell you something? Being stuck with people for multiple times will bring some stuff out. Oh, it will bring, are there's, are, are there's some unresolved issues in the house. Some things that you've been covering, some things that, that you've been hiding, some things that you didn't want to deal with, some things that, that you just felt like, well, I'm just going to sweep it under the rug. Can I tell you, because you're in the house every night, every day now, you're tripping over that rug. You're tripping over everything that you swept under the wall. Are there un some unresolved issues? In the Is there domestic violence? Can we be real? Is there domestic violence in the house? I'm praying. I'm praying for for those, because uh, statistics say that during this time of the stay-at-home order, the best domestic violence has risen up 34%. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and type in praying, praying. We're, we're praying for some children. We're praying for some husband or some wife or some, some girlfriend, some boy. We're praying right now because domestic violence is rampant in our cities and in our homes. And, and, and is it so in his face? In your house, uh, uh, it's lack of communication. So in your favor, you walk around. It's five people in the home, and don't nobody say good morning. Don't, nobody say how you doing. Nobody, you're not laughing and sitting down and talking. Is there a lack of communication in your marriage? Is there a lack of intimacy in your house? 
Oh, 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 just, uh, you, uh, this is supposed to be a time where husband and wife are coming together and you're talking more and you're doing more. What's in your house? Uh, is there dysfunction in your house? Oh, oh, is there this dysfunction in your house? You know, it, you know the, the worst thing in the world, beloved, is when dysfunction becomes normalcy. You, you've been dysfunctional so long that now dysfunction seems like normalcy. It is normal to you. Yeah, you're now calling right wrong and you're calling wrong right because you dealt in this for so long. Now that's all you used to. Beloved, beloved, can I tell you, before your house can be free, you must be true to what's in the house. Can I say it again? Can I say it like this? You can't deal with it until you diagnose it. Until you are true and honest to what's going on in your house, your house ain't going to get better. Yeah, what is in your house? So the prophet asked her a sincere question. What do you have in your house? Notice, notice her response, beloved. Notice her response in the B clause of verse number two. Notice her response. She said this. It's on the lower part of your screen. He said nothing at all except the flesh of all she replied nothing at all except a flash of oil she replied did, 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 did she just say nothing at all not even you have something or you don't she said nothing at all except a flash of oil either you have something or you don't is there small thinking in your house uh, do you think that what you have is insignificant? Do you think that what you have God can't use? Oh, 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 oh I, I remember the story. Well, Jesus trying to feed our 5,000 and they're looking for food and the disciples go around asking everybody what they have and they come up to a little boy who has his lunch. He has two fish and five loaves of bread. Let's be real, y'all. He didn't have loaves like Marita. He didn't have that, that sunbeam bread. He didn't have that butter bread. He had five fishes, two sardines and five fishes. And they bring it to Jesus and they say, Jesus, it ain't no food. All we have is two fish and five. Can I tell you right now, beloved, it doesn't matter how insignificant or how small you think what you have is. When you put it in the master's hand, I'm getting ready to shout. When you put it in the master's hand, go Go ahead and type in, put it in his hand. Put it, when you put it in the master's hand, he can make something out of nothing. He can do amazing things with the small things of our life. Do you, do, do you have small thinking? Do you think what you have is, is significant? I tell you this all the time. If you have God, then baby, you got everything. If you have God, beloved, then you have everything. Go ahead and type in, I have God. I have, if you have God, Oh, great is he that's within me, that he that's in the world. If I have God, then I have everything. If I have God, then I have victory. If I have God, then I have healing. If I have God, then I have deliverance. If I have God, then my bills are paid. If I have God, then my family is safe. If I have God, I have everything, 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 everything. She's stuck on this mindset that she doesn't have anything. So can I ask you a question? Do you maybe have some strongholds in your house? Uh, what's a stronghold? Uh, uh, Ty Adams said a stronghold is, is a mindset uh, impregnated with hopelessness that causes the believer to accept as unchangeable something that he or she knows is contrary to the will of God. Do you have strong? Is something holding you back from God? Yeah, it's mom and them holding you back from God. It's the way you were raised, the way you were brought up. You know, mom and them live like this, so I'm going to live like this. If mom and them live beneath what God had for them, then that was on mom and them. I'm going to get everything that, go ahead and type it. I'm getting everything God has for me. I'm the strongholds. Uh, in your house. We got it. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Uh, the text says in verse 3, look at verse number 3. The text says, Elijah said, Borrow. <laughs> uh, maybe you don't you don't have this in your house. So Elijah said, "Borrow as many empty jars." Uh, Second Kings four and three NLT. Elijah said, "Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors." from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. When I tell you I read that, that jump out, he, Elijah said, go get the jobs from all your friends. Now you know they're gonna be trying to figure out what you are doing. It ain't none of their business. Go inside the house and shut the door. Can I tell you something? Can I speak something?
happened to you that's not even in my notes. Stop telling everybody what God telling you. Stop telling everybody what God is telling you. It's not when God speaks something in your heart, it's time for you to go in and pray. And God says, for yeah, 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 yeah. The things that he does see, he will reveal them things openly. He said, go inside the house and shut the door. We don't need anybody seeing what God is doing. When it's time for them to see it, they'll receive it. Yeah, go ahead and type, I receive that. They'll see it. He said, go in the house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pull olive oil from your flask into the jars. Now, this woman says she didn't have nothing but a little bit of olive oil. He says, pour olive oil from your flask into the jars. City each one aside when it is filled. Now, I love verse number five. Verse number five says, so she did as she was told. Ah, uh, beloved, can I ask you a question? Is there submission in the house? Are you submitted to what God is saying? I love this because the text said she did as she was told. She didn't ask the man of God, well, how am I going to fill the, the jaws up? I only have a little bit of oil. No, it says she grabbed her She with her son. She said, go to everybody's house and grab all the jars you can. Mama, why we grab job and grab? Boy, just do it and set up. Y'all mama ever told y'all that? You ever asked your mama, mama, let's for dinner? And she said, it's called even set up. She said, you, you just get them jaws and bring them jaws and when y'all get in here don't you leave my door open don't you leave y'all 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 know y'all know your mama used to say you don't live in no barn shut my door behind you don't don't leave my door open close the door and they begin to pull the pour the oil inside she did what he said i don't know who i'm talking to but can i tell you some amazing things happen when you do what god says Great things happen, beloved. Doors are open when you do what God said. Ways are made when you do what God says. Things will be mighty and great and amazing in your life if you just do what God said. We preached our, our own ways tonight a few weeks ago. I don't understand, but I trust you. God, I don't understand why you're saying she didn't understand why the man of God told her to get jaws and pour, but she did what he said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody scream loud. Just do what he says. Type in right now. Just do what he says. He's giving you vision. He's giving you insight. He's giving you dreams. He's telling you how to come out of this pandemic on top. Just do what he says. Oh, we, we got to go. Uh, look at verse number five. Verse number five, Second Kings 5, NLT. It says her sons, her sons. They believe it in God too. Her sons kept bringing jobs to her as she filled one after another. Soon, soon, beloved, soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another job. She said to one of her sons, hey, didn't I tell y'all to keep bringing me jobs? Bring me another job. There aren't any more. There aren't any more jobs, mama. Mama, all the jobs are gone. There's not any more. He told her and the olive oil stopped flowing. Oh my God, I'm about to go crazy right now. Did you did you see that? Did you see that? Did, see, she tells her son, ah, bring me some more jaws. And, and they say, well, mama, we don't have any more jaws. And when they tell her that there are no more jaws, then the olive oil stopped flowing. Listen, it's crazy because the oil never ran out. The jaws did. <laughs> you missed that. The oil never ran out. The jaws did. Why? Because when God starts something in your life, he doesn't, oh my God, he doesn't let it end until it's completed. It's not, it doesn't end until it does and accomplish everything that God has sent it to be. That's why the, that's why the writer in Philippians said this, in Philippians 1 it says, being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work will carry it out to complete and to the day of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, wherever God has started in your life, he's going to finish it. Whatever vision, whatever dream, whatever desire, he's going to finish it. He's going to bring it up. He's going to make it great. He's going to make it prosper. Whatever God has done in your life, he's not going to stop it short. Oh, hey, go ahead and type that. Not short, not short, not short. No, it will complete. It will finish the assignment. Hey, didn't God say that? We talked about that last week. What, what God said, what, uh, what God said, I know the thoughts I think. The one you said, Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a expected end. God says, listen, listen, everything I do, my word, when I 
my word out. My word cannot return to me, boy. It's going to do it. It says the, the, the oil didn't run out. The oil kept on pouring. She ran out of jobs. Goodbye, y'all. Goodbye, y'all. We're at verse number seven. Verse number seven is what I came for today. Verse number seven says this. It says, when she told the man of God what had happened. Oh, I'm going crazy. I'm tripping, y'all. It says when she told the man of God what had happened, what had happened, he said to her, now sell the, uh, the olive oil and pay your debts. She says, man of God, you know, we fill up all the jars. We, the oil kept on running, but we had a jars now. What, what do I do now? I have the oil. What do I do now? He says, go and sell the olive oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons can live off of what is left over. He said, go ahead and take the olive oil, sell it, pay all your debts, any money you have left over from the sale. He said, keep that, you can live. In the olive oil you have left over, you and your sons can live. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I came by here today to tell somebody, get ready for now. Oh, God, I'm about to go crazy up in here. Get ready for not just enough, because God will always give you more than enough. Type it right now more than enough. Don't just get ready for enough, but during this season in your life, God is going to give you more than enough. And that more than enough that is going to sustain you and your family for months, days, and years to come. That more than enough that he, he won't, he's not just going to give you enough. He's going to give you more than enough. Yeah, you know, the, the, the two fish and five loaves of bread, them five bitches I talked about, you do you do know after he fed 5,000, the Bible says that the disciples picked up 12 baskets of fragments. They picked up 12 different baskets of, of leftovers. They had 12 back, 12 tupperware, 12 tupper, tupper, tupperware bowls full of leftovers for tomorrow. Can I tell you something? What God is doing in your life, God is going to leave you some leftovers. Oh, my God. Go ahead and type in leftovers, leftovers. Yeah, when you pay your bill today, God going to give you, leave you some leftovers to pay another bill tomorrow. All right receive that. Oh, I speak that into your life. God is going to give you some leftovers by y'all, by y'all. But why is God going to do this? Why? Because Ephesians 3, 3 and 20 says, not unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think according to the power. I don't know what you're thinking, but God is going to do more. I don't know what you're dreaming, but God is going to do more. I don't know what your vision is, but God is going to do more. Type it right now more type it right now more type it right now more i receive that god is doing more not just in me more in my marriage more in my family more in my children more in my finances more in my neighbors more in my friends i believe that the anointing and the power of god is transferable so he's not just giving me more he's giving everybody that's connected to me more listen everyone that's connected will be blessed because of you oh yeah yeah lift your hands and say I received that more 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 throw your hands up and scream God will give me more than I need Oh, beloved, he's going to give you more than, than you need. We we have to get out of here, but but before you go, I, do I have anybody who already knows that even in this time of corona, even in this time of standing home, even in, in this time of lost wages and this time of a failing economy, Paul has already said in Philippians 419, King James, but God shall supply all your needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm closing now, I'm sorry, but but maybe, maybe you don't know that. Maybe you don't know that God can supply your needs. Maybe you never experienced God. Maybe God has never done anything for you. So let me tell you, like the New Living Translation says it. Let me tell you, the New Living Translation says it like this. In Philippians 419, Living Translation, it says, And this same God, oh, I'm about to get up and shout. And the same God that takes care of me will supply all your needs Oh, all your needs from his glorious riches. Can I tell you, beloved, the same God that takes care of me, the same God that delivers me, the same God that he will take care of you by y'all. It's time to go. It's time to go. But I came to tell somebody that the same God that pays my bills will pay your bills. The same God that bring you out, he'll bring you out. The same God that saved 
my children will save your children. The same God that lift me up will lift you up. The same God, listen, if you don't have the faith right now, just lean on my faith. Uh, lean on my faith. My, my faith will be strong enough for all of us. Lean on my faith. Why? Because I've learned, I've learned to judge the future by the past. If God brought me out yesterday, he'll bring me out today. If he paid my house note yesterday, he'll pay my house note today. If he, oh God, if, if my life was cut on yesterday, he'll make sure my life still stay on today. Listen, listen, listen. If your faith is shaking right now, lean on my faith. Why? Because my God, but this is a personal thing to you. My God, I declare and decree, I release over your life right now that the God I serve, the God that takes care of me, will take care of you. How do I know? I know because he has no respect to person. What he does for one, he'll do for the other. He, if he never forsake Joshua, never forsake Abraham, never forsake me, he won't forsake you. Oh, oh that same God. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and, and type that in right now. Say, say, Pastor, that same God, that same God that takes care of him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, he would take care of me. Yeah, he told me, yeah, that same God that takes care of him. Go ahead and type that. That same God that takes care of him. That same God that sustained him. Now, I know you say, well, Pastor, what you lost? You, maybe you don't know. My, we, I've lost them too. My, my wife, Lady Sharana, she's been furloughed during this time. We don't even know if this shirt is going to last past this month. She's been furloughed. But guess what? We already know that the same God that took care of us yesterday will take care of us tomorrow. And you got you to believe that. I'll just believe it. I know it. Ooh, God, I'll just believe it. I know he will. Oh, I ain't know what Paul said, and we know. He didn't say we believe. He didn't say we think. He said, I know. It is a it is not, I don't have a shadow of a doubt. He said, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. And can I tell you, beloved, whatever you're going through right now, it is working together for your good. But listen, 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 stop your crying. Dry your tears. Stop your cry. Sit up straight and, and, and listen and tune, get in tune to what God is saying. Because during this time, God is going to speak great and amazing things over your life. You have something in your house right now, beloved, that can make you a millionaire. You have something in your house right now that will make you great. You have something in your house right now, which is your family, that God is bringing families back together. He's bringing joy back at home. He's bringing peace back at home. He, he's solidifying marriages right now. In the name of Jesus, what you have in your house, you got to trust God enough to give it to God. Because if you give it to him, he'll give you back more than you ever imagined. He'll give you back more. He'll give you back more than you ever imagined. She said, man, of God, only thing I have. Is a little bit of oil. That all I have is a little bit of oil. What she was saying, she said, man of God, what I got, I can't do nothing with. And I know the devil has tricked some of you, fooled some of you to make you think that what Good you morning, have people. is, is and God bless you on this oh, Sunday morning. What can I tell and you? saints everywhere, you add your it's natural. a good day to be alive to and to know that we're in uh, you God's become a supernatural For the Lord God is the joy, the peace, desire, and the strength of our lives. Dream, a very present help have, at the time Lord. of any God's trouble. Coming. He's all our sufficiency. God is not Whatever you, we need God's in life, you, God's you. got it. He's God has the power to heal, you. to deliver, to keep, and to right right bless now. us. And no I'm matter where we are, God will always care for us, deliver us, and bless us because we are his children. We are the called of God. We are God's anointed. We are saved. We are sanctified. We are full. I believe God. Come on, say it with me. I believe God. Come on, say it with me again. I believe God. I believe God. God. I know it looks dim right now, but I believe God. I know you don't see a way right now, but I believe God. I know you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, but I believe God. I know you're nervous because when this pandemic is over, you lost your job. God, am I going to find another job? I believe God. I believe him. 
even though I don't understand everything that he's doing, I know without a shadow of a doubt that everything he's doing is working out in my favor. By your hands, beloved, let's pray. Gracious Father, we love you. We adore you. Thank you for this Sunday morning. Thank you, God, for this another time of virtual worship. Thank you, God, for, for the ability, even in the midst of this pandemic, when the world is going crazy, God, you, you still made the church stable. Yeah, we're not in our, in our sacred sanctuaries, God, but we thank you for the fact that we created sanctuaries in our homes. Thank you, God, for meeting us in our homes. God bless some family, bless some husband, bless some wife, bless some child right now. Well, they're locked in this home. They're locked in the home, not knowing what to do. Let them know, God, that what they need is already in the house. I pray for, for the mental state of man. I pray, God, because during this time, God, depression is rising. Little girl, little girl, teenage girl committed suicide the other day because she's been locked in so much. God, God bless every home right now. Bless every family right now. God, allow families to come together and, and eat dinner together and, and walk the neighborhood together and play games together. God, let every family know and come together that this is a time of togetherness. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. I bind, I rebuke that spirit of depression. I know that spirit. I bind, and I almost shut down. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Give peace to the minds, God, and peace to the hearts in the name of Jesus. Raise us up better than we were when we went in. Bring us out, God. In a better financial state. Oh, say, well, Pastor, how can that happen? We don't have jobs, but we have God. And as long as we have God, we have everything. God raise us up. Oh, I declare and decree. I speak it over you. I declare and decree. I speak it over you. I declare and decree. I speak it over you in the name of Jesus that every need is met, every bill is paid, and every child is fed. I release that into your homes. I release that into your families. I release that into your finances. In the name of Jesus. God, open us back up. Not too soon, God. Give our, our governors and our mayors and our president wisdom and knowledge, God, that make sure this pandemic is, is, is declining, God, before they open everything back up. God, God, you stabilize the economy. You stabilize our homes like only you can. And when you've done these things, we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. We'll tell everybody it was you that did it. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, I speak over you right now. I declare and decree that every need shall be met. Go ahead and type that in right now. Every need shall be met. Every bill shall be paid. And every child shall be fed. Do you hear me? Did you hear what I said? I declare and decree right now that every need shall be met. Every need shall be met. Every bill shall be paid. And every child shall be fed in the name of Jesus. Can I say it one more time? I believe, I declare and decree, I release this in the Holy Ghost over your life. Every need shall be met. Every bill shall be paid, and every child shall be fed. Go ahead and type in right now, I receive that. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, thank you so much for joining us today for another time of worship. Our virtual service here at All People International Church. I'm Pastor Arnold Jones, and we love you so much. Listen to all you that, that's new to us. Join us here every week at 6, on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9.30 a.m. Join us right here just for our virtual worship service. If you want to give this morning, let's, let's give. Let's, let's give our offer. Let's sow a seed and let's return that tithe back to God. People ask me all the time, Pastor, what's the best way to get blessed? Get blessed. The best and the easiest way to be blessed is to include God in your finances. Can I tell you, if you give God that 10% out of the 100, God can do more for you with 90% 
that you could ever do by yourself with 100. Include God. Be a tithe payer, return that tithe back to God, and know that God will do great and marvelous things in your life. Well, Pastor, how can I give? It's right there on the screen. Uh, the first thing you can do is go to our website. Our website is www.allpeopleint.org. www.allpeopleint.org. Go to our website. You'll see, you'll see, the, you'll see the section that says give. Click around that section. It'll direct you for, what, for your next steps. Or if you have a smartphone, I tell you this every week. If you have a smartphone, if you don't have a smartphone, it is 2020. Go get yourself a smartphone. Preferably get an iPhone. Don't, don't be messing around with them Androids. Get an iPhone. But if you have a smartphone, download the Give Lafay app. That app is spelled G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Download the Give Lafay app. Anywhere in the world, you can go to that app and you can give. Anywhere in the world, you can return your tithe, you can pay, give your offering, and you can sow a seed anywhere in the world. When you go to that app, it, on the search field, type in All People International Church, Jacksonville, Florida. Our uh, zip code is 32208. Again, type in All People International Church. That zip code is 32208. And once you do that, beloved, you'll, you'll see our church logo and a beautiful picture of our chief apostle bishop at jones and bishop sharon jones go and give there or or if you have cash out cash app has changed the way we do everything cash app is the dollar sign a p i c j a x it's an abbreviation for all people in the national church in jacksonville dollar sign a p i c j a s give today i promise you beloved this is fertile ground and we thank you so much for all the gifts you've already sown during this time and even before this time thank you for the gifts that you're sowing thank you for the time that you're returning back to god and the seeds that you're sowing right now thank you right now for even during this time of pandemic you're still a blessing to the house of god and because you bless the house of god god will bless you I love you, beloved. Again, from all people in the National Church, I'm Pastor Ardell Jones. We love you. I want to hug you so much, so much, so much. I want to hug you so much. The blessing of God be upon your life. See you Wednesday night.